Yeah, saying no is one thing, accepting no is another thing. When is the best time to correct your parents? Either, oh, you want to tell me that you're wiser than when me? I feel like you don't correct your spouse like you're correcting a child. God is interested in how you wake up in the morning. There must be a clear demonstration of the power of God. See, I did high octave and low octave. You guys are going to enjoy today's episode. Today? Are you ready? I'm ready. I climb to the highest mountain. Hello and welcome to the premiere episode of Unwalled. Unwalled is a talk show where we break down all of the barriers and talk about those conversations we don't often have in church. Like I said, this is the premiere episode and it's a live show, so we're super excited to have you join us today. My name is Bulogi Steving and with me is... Nancy and Nancy. All right. So today we're going to be talking about, we're going to be discussing the topic, what will people say? I'm sure that you have a lot to um, say or to listen to on this topic. So yeah, to start, have you ever done or not do anything because you don't want people to say something? Thinking, okay, what will people say? Okay, I can hear some people saying, yes. So um, we'll have two people tell us their experience, what you did or what you didn't do, just to avoid the word what people say. Praise the Lord. My experience is a terrible, or was a terrible one. I endured abuse for five years because I, I didn't want people to say or to look at me in a manner or maybe mar my reputation in the society, in the church. So I endured abuse for five years. Mental abuse, physical abuse, psychological, psychological abuse, emotional. I know they are all encompassed in one, but that's it. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. We're starting on a very deep note. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, Yes, I've, there are so many things I've restrained from that um, I should have done, if not that I care about what people would say. And um, I just shared with my brother, I would have been more rascally than I am right now. In all sincerity, if not that I care about what people would say. Um, I didn't like so much of parties, but growing up, I had this crave and motivation to go to clubs. I've never been to a club. Up till date, it's still a craving. <laughs> and honestly, I restrained myself only because of what people would say. But then, God have mercy. Praise God. Um, I, my dad wanted me to be a doctor. He said I wanted it to. I can't remember that. And then I went to Bingham, 100 level. I just failed. Just couldn't pass that medicine. And then he kept, what would people say? What would people say that I cannot be a doctor? This thing was just hard. And even down to NYSC, I was still buying jam form to be a doctor. This thing slowed my life down because of what would people say that, ah, you started medical school. Even till date, sometimes if I go to his office, they say, ah, doctor. And <laughs> She tried to call me doctor. No, I'm a teacher. I'm not a doctor. So this one when people say slowed me down for a very long time. Okay, thank you. I think for me, like Elder said, well, not the club part of it, but <laughs> like he said, I think for me, it's there's so many things I want to do. But I'm like, ah, people say your own is too much. Ah, you have started again. Only you, this one. Only you, that one. So you just shrink or you just, you know, leave it and say, and then you see other people doing it and then you go, they pain you, you know. So I'm, I'm glad that some of us here have experience with this. So as Christians, what should be our response? What will people say? Apparently, it's a thing, especially in this part of the world where everybody is in everybody's business. So you cannot avoid it. So as Christians, what should be our response to what, to what will people say? And we want to hear you. So let's hear like three people, four. While, while they're thinking, right? Okay. What comes to mind? I'm thinking that as Christians, 
we must pay attention to what God says yep. above what people will say. So, guys, take a second and imagine that you are Noah and God has told you to build an ark because there's going to be rain. There hasn't been rain before. You start building. It's not one day. It's not two days. It's not one year. It's not two years. It's not 10 years. It's not 20 years. Do we know how long Noah built that ark? Now, imagine the things that people were saying. Imagine I was in Nigeria. Uh, what kind of thing will you hear? Audio ring. <laughs> they will insult you, insult your father, insult yeah. your generation. You are Say, finished. Ha, I'm telling you, call you no mad. No integrity. No, your, your reputation children. is finished. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. So he went through all of that, but he remembered the instruction that God gave him. Yeah. So for me, I think that as Christians, we must pay attention to what God says above what people will say, say yeah. and so that if if there's an assignment or a purpose that God has placed in our hearts, we're not stopping it just because of what people will say, you know. Okay, yeah. we have one hand in the audience, we have two, two and we have three. three, and we have four. Five. Five. Okay, great. Okay. So, yeah. okay, um, I just wanted to say that generally, if you become a Christian, a born-again Christian, you have chosen to walk in a path that is narrow, a path that is different from the world system. And as such, there would always be something for people to say about you because you will always be different from the pack. You always be doing, going OP, like we say in Nigeria, you're just opposites. You know, people are doing these and you are not doing it. They are going to club, they are drinking, they are smoking, they are doing all kinds of things or they are bribing their ways to get what they want and you cannot do that. And so there would always be talk about you, whether you like it or not, for the fact that you have taken a stand to walk with Christ. People would always say things about you that are not positive according to the world system. They will they'll view you as a deviant, you know. And so it's something that you must come to understand, to accept, and to keep standing and to keep working in God's word. She had mentioned earlier that God's word is the standard. So as long as you are living by God's standard, the word of God, you know, his standard for your life, it doesn't matter, you know, what people say. All the people who have stood out in the scripture, there had always been something that was said about them that was not right. From people like even Daniel that even common prayer, ordinary prayer become an, became an issue that other people were talking about that he prayed all the time. And it was the basis upon which he was thrown into the lion's den. To people like Daniel who refused to take, eat the king's uh, choice meals. And you know, had to, decided to take a stand. So it's, it's, it's the norm. People will talk about you. People will say something. And if you want to walk with Jesus, just know that you have to be like a deaf frog. You know, that just doesn't listen. To what people say otherwise you will get discouraged along the way so that's just what i wanted to see thank you thank you okay i think for me um what's most important in situations like that is i just look inward and hear what the holy spirit tells me because as a salesperson i meet very annoying customers on a daily basis people who will annoy you by force and sometimes i'm tempted to either just slap them a bit or just tell them off but the Holy Spirit will tell me, guy, you can't do that, you know. And for me, that's what it is most important. I listen to the witness of the Holy Spirit that keeps me in check. If not, maybe I would have, you would have been receiving calls on a daily basis saying your husband is misbehaving or something like that. You husband. Know, somebody's husband. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another thing also is that, for instance, for me, the office will usually query you when they hear that you have that route to a customer or anything. Nobody wants to hear your side of the story because they say customer is king. But everywhere I've gone to have corrected that statement. I say customer is king if they behave like one. You know, I don't take that as a blanket statement. But more importantly is the fact that I listen to the Holy Spirit when I want to cross the line. Thank you. Um, good morning, church. I think everyone has answered as Christians. I don't think I'll answer as a Christian. Okay. Um, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> When you have a decision to make, um, you first look at it and know if it's good for you. Then 
The next thing you need to check is if you're not hurting anyone doing it. Then if you're not hurting anyone, please let them talk. Because uh, I've been in a situation where I didn't do what I wanted to do because so many people told me that I shouldn't do it. But I ended up not doing it and they still talked and said, you should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, let them talk. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Back in secondary school, there was a message that God used the FCS patron then, Mr. C.B. Madaki, to share. And since then, it never left. And I feel it applies to this conversation, you know. And he said, whatever it is you want to do, before you do it, think about it. Will it bring glory to God? And as, as a Christian, every decision that you have to, to make, anything, uh, whatever it is you want to do, if that thing will not bring glory to the name of God, then there is no point doing it at all. Praise God. All right, so um, I think the discussion is a bit one-sided. We've all assumed that what people will say is always bad. But it's not always the case. In the first place, who is people? We need to define who is people in this question. People can be your spouse, people can be members of your fellowship, people can be members of your church, right? And people will not always be wrong. It is true that as believers, our primary tool of instruction is God's word. But then God will certain times use the people around us to speak to us. We might not always be right. People have lost divine guidance by virtue of saying, people are always speaking badly against me. So you need to sit back and ask yourself, what are the people I've surrounded myself with? If I'm in fellowship and what people are saying, and I want to believe that people in fellowship are godly. If, if they are saying one thing I am, and I am saying another thing, it is in. It is instructive for me to go back and reevaluate what they are saying. People are not always saying bad. People will not always say bad. At times, God will lead us through the people around us. So if you have the correct people around you, it is instructive, it is wise for you to also consider what they are saying in the broader light of God's word. Thank you. So my contribution is really similar to his. And I think in all this, the fundamental question is, who are the people talking? Do I need to stand? OK. Who, who are the people talking? That's the fundamental question in all this. Um, he said something really key, that God uses people to speak to us. I'll share a personal experience. Like four years ago, I was in a relationship. And now I know it wasn't the right relationship. I had a number of people speaking to me, but I thought they were just talking what they wanted. But it took two years in that relationship for me to realize that actually God was speaking and not people just talking anyhow. So we need to ask who is speaking. Are these people reliable? Are these people people we can trust and listen to before you conclude and say people are just talking? So who is talking is very fundamental to whether you listen or not. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So that means we need to know what God is saying and we need to check ourselves to know that God is the one speaking to us. And um, finally, we should check ourselves again, examine yourself. You need to know the medium you communicate to God. How does God speak to you? Do you need to hear from anybody? Do you need to take your own decisions by yourself? I think Dr. Wayne mentioned the positive side of it, you need to hear from someone as well. Yeah, you know, because sometimes eh, we are led by our emotions and then we say that yeah. it's God. So when you say, oh, listen to what God will say above what people will say. Preference. But mm -hmm. you have chosen to, especially when it comes to this relationship matter, you have immersed your, like our sister shared, you've immersed your emotions. Maybe you're listening to your emotions and then you think that it is God, you know, and that brings us to, like Nati will say, another angle, you know, which is what Dr. Winom shared. What people will say sometimes can help us align. It can keep us accountable. The yeah. truth is, there are some of us here that have not done some bad things because you know that if you do what you want to do, 
you know yeah. <laughs> that by the time they see Braliki <laughs> in some kinds of places, you know, <laughs> you won't want to go there. So it keeps yeah. us accountable sometimes. Yeah. And then um, sometimes it can actually help to test your conviction. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if you think that something is right, and then, you know, people are talking, it might require you to go back and say, okay, why am I doing what I'm doing? What is my reason? What is my why? Let's not just always think we are right. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that let he that think he stand, take, take heed, heed, lest he fall. Yeah. We are not always right. So we must be careful to know that angle where we are checking ourselves. And finally, I think, does this apply? You know when Paul says, if what I would do would cause people to fall? There's a level of maturity that you might get to that sometimes it might, be, it's not, it might not just be that people are talking. It might be that because of what you're doing, somebody else might fall. So you take dressing, you know, so that you don't need somebody to fall. All right, to add, Ella Shera was talking about um, going out to club or not going out. Now, um, there's another angle. To be yeah, angle. You know? Yeah. Talking about accountability is a very wide, um, um, I think, I would say is a necklace that is on everybody's neck. As a Christian, you are accountable to someone. So looking at it, that you don't have to do something is a positive. Not thinking about, you know, the thing is now, we as Christians, we have to figure that Whatever you do and you don't do, somebody else is looking at you. If you do the good, the person is looking at you. He's learning. If you do the bad, the person is as well learning. So uh, we'll take Echo as a case study. At times, I'll say a number of times, we'll find out that our mothers will try to cover up um, a, lady that, a lady that is not well-dressed. She's covering for what will people say. She's not your mother, but she's coming to cover for your biological mother. What will people say? Yes, because um, if, she, if, she, if she ignores you, somebody will say something that will lead to your parents are not training you properly. So what will people say? She's not your mother, biological mother, but she's your mother. She's like, now you're accountable to her. Reason being, you worship in the same environment. She's your mother. She, he's your father. That's why you find some fathers, even in the church, they correct you. Some will even give you a punishment that you serve. But I don't know if it happens in this generation anyways. But accountability is a necklace that is hanging on everyone that needs to realize that, okay, one or two people are looking up to me. So, like... We must realize that as Christians, accountability is important. Yep. Accountability is very important. You have somebody that you are accountable to. Okay. How do people um, listen to um, their colleagues? Let me put it this way. Do you even listen to anyone that is trying to correct you? Or do you go about, no, 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 I'm not wrong, and you want to fight? So how do you listen to someone that is ready to correct you? Before you answer, consider, do you even listen? Are you even ready? Do you want to start? How do you listen to people that correct you? Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's, um, it's hard, but I listen, actually. <laughs> I listen. I keep quiet and I listen. My own part is I always ask questions. Okay. So what do you think? What do you think? Do I go this way or do I go the other way? I always ask. I listen, then I ask questions. I think we have two hands. Okay, I, there was something about how do you listen or something like that to people that try to talk to you or correct you. Yeah, that's the initial question. So I'll have two contributions on this. One is a direct contribution. The other one is a request. Direct contribution. Okay. It's, it's easier to answer the question than to leave the answer. So I can answer and say, I listen well when people correct me. It's a different thing while the correction is ongoing. And if I haven't confused us, my request is 
Rather than have Nati answer the question, please, let's ask Blessing to answer the question on Nati's behalf. And you can give her the mic. <laughs> okay, I will say he listens. He, and he asks questions just as he said. Hmm. Okay. Two fish for you. <laughs> Good morning once again. <clears throat> Um, I don't think anyone can correct you. For instance, if I want to go into a business, I wouldn't take advice from a civil servant. Yes. You have to, you have to be in the process for you to be able to tell me what I am going to face in the process. If it's a relationship advice, for instance, I could actually listen to people that are close to you because they could give me signs that I will watch out for. But really, you don't just take advice from anybody. Thank you. Okay. So not just everybody. You know, you yeah. have to be particular about... Anyone? Who... Right. I think there's one more person. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you... If you want to succeed in life, um, you have to be very humble. Now, God speaks in diverse ways, and he speaks through many things. Remember the prophet who was spoken to by the, the donkey, right? So, I will a bit differ from what he has said, because if you're not careful to, to, to listen, you may actually miss your advice, miss the opportunity to get it right. You know, the past you know, four or five years, I think I've had God speak to me on so many issues through my children. You know, as little as they are. You know, God used them to speak to me. But in the real sense, what can a child you know, tell you? What advice does a child have to tell you? You know, so... You could get advice from, from a lot of people. But I think that if you have a, a goal, if you have something to achieve, and you are looking to hear something, you know, you have to pay attention to what God is saying through people, through your environment. So I think that um, um, God speaks in different ways, and he speaks through different things. Just to add to what Gideon said, and what uh, the brother behind me said, you know, he mentioned something about credibility, that before someone can advise you on something, that person should have experienced it when he used that experience of a civil servant at, um, advising a business person or not. In life, we have people who may not have had the kind of experiences that we are currently going through. So, for example, generally, amongst young people, you know, there's a... There's a the world changed in the last 30 years in a very dramatic way. So we have parents who probably didn't experience the internet, they don't know much about it, and they are now having to be in place to advise over certain things. I will just add to what Gideon said. Sometimes God can lead you or someone, God can lead someone to direct you who probably have never experienced what you have experienced. But God has placed that person as an authority over your life like say our parents. So parents may not, so you may have a mother who had never gone to university or may not have been so exposed, but somehow that person can still guide you by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You know, as the person walks with God and because that person is your parent, God can reveal to them and God can give them that, that wisdom to advise you even though they have not been exposed as much as you have. So it's something that we should bear in mind, especially as young people. When we say, you are old school, daddy, you are old school, mommy, you are old school, you don't know what we are talking about. Yes, they may not know some of the things, they may not understand some of the technological advancements that we have, but yet, God has placed them over our life and they can correct us, you know, uh, accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ha um, having answered that part, can we check this part? How do you handle people that are not ready to listen? How do you handle people that are not ready to listen? Okay, so I just wanted to say that, 
You know, the Bible says that out of two or three, the truth is established. And so I feel like um, when more than one person is saying something to you, it's something that you should pay close attention to. It's something that you should actually look into, you know, and do some other findings if you can. And I also wanted to say that, um, you know, witnessing of our hearts to a truth that somebody is speaking to us is very important. The truth is, sometimes you might actually argue and, you know, um, try to put up defense and all of that. But deep down inside of us, we actually know that what this person is saying is true. And even if we don't realize it immediately, as time goes on, we begin to actually see those signs by ourselves, except if we are not just going to be truthful to ourselves. You know, no truth changes a man than the truth you tell yourself. So even if you argue with people and you know you're trying to put up a defense deep down inside of you, you know, you know that it's actually true and it's something you have to work on. And until you tell yourself that truth, nobody can actually make you change. Praise the Lord. So for me, I would just say, when you're advising somebody about something, just advise and leave it. Like for me, a case study. I don't like people advising me over and over again. Um, I have a strong personality in which I think I know everything. So when you advise me, I might say, no, this is not the way because I already have my opinion about it. But just let me be. Because I know that definitely at the end of the day, I'll still sit down and think about what the person said. And I'll say, okay, maybe the person is actually right and I'll change. The person will actually see the change. But I'll not tell the person that, oh, I took your advice. You will see it. Okay, thank you very much. Because of our time, we won't be able to take any more responses on that. But when you're dealing with... Um, somebody that won't, that won't listen, or like our brother said, just have the conversation with them. Yeah. Have the conversation pray with them. them. Pray and for them as well. We're believers, so pray for yeah. them as well. Don't keep hounding and hounding and hounding them. It might be counterproductive. What do we take away from everything that we have said today? And um, starting with something I've heard from a few of us today, we need to check the people around us, you know, Two people can give you the same advice in different ways. Yeah. Somebody can say something to you and you end up feeling like, oh, what's wrong with me? My own is finished. And somebody else gives you the same advice and you leave like, oh, I can do this. I can change. So we need to check the people around us. Bible says that in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. So there is a place for what people will say. But it has to be people that are giving us counsel. People that are giving us the right kinds of things to say. So it's important. Yes, you would meet so many people and relate with so many people. But who are the people that have access to your life? People that actually can speak into you know, your life. We need to check that very well. Um, to add, can we um, consider the Bible in Proverbs? The Bible says um, it is dangerous to worry yourself about what people will say. Rather, it is safer for you to trust God. So if you trust God, we've been saying that, and um, the audience have been saying, trust God, listen to God. So if you listen to God and you trust God, don't bother about what people say. Even when they speak, pray about it. Then ask God for direction. And then check your motive. Sometimes some of the things we are doing is because of pain or fear or pride. Some of us, nobody can talk to me. It's actually because of a deep place of pride. Yeah. So you're going about doing things, raising shoulder, plenty shoulder pad, and nobody can talk to you. Yeah. And it's just pride. And we don't know everything. We actually need people that can speak. Or some people, it's because of pain. Yes. You yes. know, you're making mm -hmm. a decision in your life, and you're going a certain way just because of pain. And you're not allowing people to help you or to speak to you because you have covered yourself in pain. So like David will say, check my heart. Sometimes we need to ask God to check our hearts and check our motive. I don't know if um, anybody has any practical steps that we can take going forward from this discussion. I think we can take one or two. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, what I would suggest as a practical step is to take communication seriously. That's both as someone passing a message and someone receiving a message. 
because um, there's something my brother used to say. Say, I'm only responsible for what I say. I'm not responsible for what you understand. But it 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 doesn't work that way. You are not communicating if I tell you something and the other person doesn't understand. So it's left for us to invest in knowing the person we are talking to. Number one, knowing how you try to pass your message, and then on the receiving end, humble yourself. Try to listen, listen to what God is saying. And then if it's something that is aligning with your spirit, you take to me, it's just communication, basically. Just invest in communication. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Um, just to say that you, like I said earlier on, one, you have to be very humble. Sometimes when you are you have set your face on achieving something, you don't want to hear something on the opposite direction. So you have to be open-minded and also be objective. And then secondly, you must learn to hear from God because what people see, you should be able to align it with what the Spirit of God is saying. Because if you don't, um, people might say things that sound very good and in the real sense, that's not it. But if you learn to hear from God and measure the things people say alongside the Word of God and the Spirit of God, you'll be able to get it right. I think it's important to identify what feeds pride in your life. I'll give you a practical example. Two years ago, I was into the feminism movement. I don't have an opinion about that, but I don't think it's very healthy. And I noticed I started joining that bandwagon because of the kind of pages I was following on social media and the kind of women I was listening to. And once I shut down that door, I noticed that the idea of, oh, it's wrong to cook for your husband was gradually leaving my heart and all that. So I think, if you follow people who tell you nobody can advise you, and there are a lot of them on social media, if we are going to be honest. So a practical step is if you get home today, go through your social media feed and ask yourself, who is feeding pride in my life? And maybe unfollow them, it will go a long way. And follow people who encourage you to be humble and serve and listen. Thanks. Thank you so much. That's such a key point. All right, um, I just want to add that we should surround ourselves with godly people because it's easy for um, God to speak to us through um, our circles of friends. Okay, sometimes we make that mistake and we just have all manner of people around us. So we should check our friend, our list of friends when we get home, like she said, and people that are not helping our lives, we delete. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Finally, people will always have something to say. They will always have something to say. But as believers, we should give them the right thing to say about us. Finally. Finally. Thank you, everybody. It has been an amazing show. So, yes, yes, it's a good place. It's a good place. Thank you for... Thank you for being a part of the premiere of Unworld. We just want to remind you that Unworld will be released every Sunday evening on our YouTube channel, Church Beyond Walls. So it's very important. It's okay to clap. <laughs> every Sunday evening, new episodes will drop on Church Beyond Walls. So it's very important that you subscribe to our YouTube page and also click the notification bell so that when new videos come up, you are the first to know. If you have any questions or any topics that you want us to discuss, please feel free. You can put it in our YouTube videos. You can give it to any of the team members in church. We would let us know who the team members are. And you can also send an email to onworld.cbw at gmail.com. I'll take that again. onworld.cbw at gmail.com. So feel free to let us know if you have comments, if you have suggestions, if you have feedback. Let us know if you enjoyed this show and what other topics or questions you have that you'd like us to address. Until we come your way next week, this is on World. God bless you. Thank you. I climb to the highest mountain.